Good evening. Hey, got a friend with me tonight. He was kind of missing me while I was uh, downstairs in the basement looking around. I haven't spent too much time in my basement. And uh, every once in a while I hear a little creak or this or that, you know, and wanted to go and check out the creeks. <laughs> I was just actually uh, reading about... Uh, Homes that had uh, a plague in the book of Leviticus. And uh, and so uh, if you have mold growing in your home, uh, it's not a good thing. And it wasn't a good thing back in the book of Leviticus either. And the priests would come out and make sure that the homes were safe. And, uh, and so uh, it's a good thing to keep an eye on your home and make sure that you have a healthy home. Uh, and that uh, it's safe for everyone in the household. So they took that seriously in the Old Testament. We should take that seriously in our homes, that we keep our homes clean and dry and nothing growing in them other than our children. And, uh, and so uh, that was really the uh, crux of the Levit Leviticus reading today. He would say it doesn't really have uh, much to pertain to us, but it does. And, uh, and so, he, as it was important to their health and their well-being, it's important to our health and well-being that we have healthy homes to live in. Uh, therefore, they've tore down dormitories in Georgia because of mold growing in them and things like that. It's like... It's serious business. Uh, but uh, today in the book of Luke, Jesus uh, was urged by uh, the Jewish people in the city that he would go and heal the centurion's uh, servant, which you don't pick up on in the other Gospels. But, but because Luke... Uh, it's eyewitness reports. He uh, adds a little bit of a different slant to the story uh, that uh, the Jewish people said that this centurion was a lover of Israel, that he even helped to pay for the synagogue that they worshiped at. And so he was a man that feared God and that wanted to honor God uh, through his life. But when he found out that Jesus was coming out to his house to heal his servant, he said uh, he sent other servants to stop Jesus from coming and sent the message that uh, he was a man under authority and that he would send a servant to go and do this and the servant would go and that, uh, and that uh, his servants did what he had asked and he said that he knew that if Jesus just said the word, that his servant would be healed. And uh, Jesus said, uh, such great faith have I not seen in all of Israel. And so that's an amazing testimony for this centurion. And I pray that we can have such faith, that we believe that if Jesus, Jesus just says the word, Lord, please heal my whoever. Uh, and you know that what is really amazing is uh, that Jesus gave his authority to his servants. And he asks uh, through Paul, that we, we ourselves would pray for the best gifts. God gives gifts of the gift of healing, the gift of teaching, the gift of uh, miracles. Uh, and so God gives all sorts of gifts, gifts of prophecy. And he tells us that we should be praying that we receive the best gifts okay and uh, 
anyone, whether they have the spiritual gift or not, can in a time of need lay hands on somebody and pray and they should believe by faith that this person will receive even though it's not a way that you normally uh, work or interact with someone because uh, in a time of need God even used a donkey to speak to his prophet Balaam or not his prophet Balaam but a prophet called Balaam who ended up being a wicked prophet and uh and uh, the donkey spoke to him and said haven't I been a good donkey and <laughs> but uh the angel said if this donkey hadn't stopped you I was going to slay you dead and so uh it's amazing what God can do he can use a donkey like me and uh, I, I praise him for that. But uh, this centurion's servant was healed. And Jesus left there and entered a town called Nain. And, uh, you know, that when I read through this, I didn't remember reading uh, about the widow. Her husband had died and the people of the city were carrying her son out of the city uh, to be buried. And Jesus had compassion on this widow whose only son had died. And he touched him and told him to rise up. And guess what? Her son raised up from the dead and Jesus presented her son to her alive. And uh, I, I this week had just heard a pastor talking about uh, his grandson who was 10 minutes in his mother's womb uh, with no uh, life. Uh, 10, 20 minutes after birth, uh, still not breathing, but uh, that young boy was prayed back to life. After 30 minutes of no oxygen, no, uh, no birth defects, no defects, no brain damage, nothing. This baby is healthy and, uh, it's amazing when people have faith to believe that you could even see the dead raised today. And I've heard many testimonies.